Unsolved mysteries and true crime have slowly become mainstream in the last decade. With the influx of true crime podcasts or streaming documentaries, it's hard not to notice. Online super sleuths, while not always advised, have helped in solving hundreds of cold cases. But is having this much access to information furthering paranoid conspiracy theories or doing actual good? Around 1,600 people disappear in mountain ranges and national parks every year. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, let us shed some light on three unsolved mysteries that still have us asking questions. Berwyn Mountain Incident On January 23, 1974, the locals in the Berwyn Mountains area of Wales heard an alarming noise and saw a beam of light in the sky. When neurologists speculated that an unidentified flying object crashed and the British government hid the military's recovery, tabloids in the area mockingly referred to it as the Roswellsh Incident. There were over five reports of a UFO sighting that night, and a search and rescue team was assembled to locate the crash, but it was never found. There was scientific confirmation that the event was generated by an earthquake along with a large meteor widely observed over Wales and northern England, casting a bright light in their direction. The Institute of Geological Sciences claimed that an earthquake of 3.5 magnitude was experienced at 8.38pm over a wide area of northern Wales and as far away as Formby, a town about 13 miles north of Liverpool. There was a police investigation into the incident showing that it was not immediately identified as an earthquake. If the magnitude of the shock was such that it had been due to an aircraft crash, the resulting crater would have been large enough to easily be visible. There are many theories about the unusual lights reported, but the most popular is that it may have been simply the meteor, but may have also included the phenomenon known as earthquake light. Earthquake light is a luminous aerial phenomenon that appears in the sky at or near areas of tectonic stress. The incident was dismissed as just that, an earthquake and a meteor combining. The meteor descended from 120 kilometers in the sky before disappearing over Manchester. The Disappearance of Thelma Pauline Polly Melton In 1981, Thelma, also known as Polly, was living in an Airstream camper with her husband. They lived half of the year in Jacksonville, Florida, and would travel to the Great Smoky Mountains for a couple of months in the fall. Polly was an avid hiker. Even though she had some minor health issues, she was still able to explore the outdoors and hike through the national park. Her husband, about 20 years older than her, did not go with her on these hikes, so she would often recruit friends to journey with her. On September 25, 1981, Polly and her husband set up their camp trailer at the Deep Creek Campground. The 58-year-old outdoor enthusiast went hiking with friends in the Deep Creek area. Around 4 p.m., Polly walked ahead of her friends, who told investigators they rested as she continued over a hill on the trail and out of sight. They assumed she had returned to check on her husband at campground, but when they got back half an hour later, Polly's husband Bob said he had not seen her. Around 6 p.m. that night, the group reported her missing to a local park ranger. It was said that Poppy was familiar with the trail they were on, and there was no indication that anyone had ventured off. She was prescribed medication for high blood pressure and nausea at the time. Polly disappeared hiking with her friends in the Great Smoky Mountains National Park more than 40 years ago. Authorities say that around 400 people go mysteriously missing in Tennessee each year. That is five for every 100,000 people. The Disappearance of Teresa Trenny Gibson On October 8, 1976, Teresa, also known as Trenny Gibson, went on a field trip with 30 to 40 of her schoolmates from Bearden High School in Knoxville, Tennessee, to the Great Smoky Mountains National Park. The group of students were hiking from Klingman's Dome, around two miles to Andrews Bald, and back on the Forney Ridge Trail. The children decided to separate into smaller groups, 
when they arrived at the trail. Their main reasoning was speed. Even with the large number of students, there was only one supervisor, along with the bus driver. Trenny would switch between groups as she hiked, depending on the pace they were going. At 3 p.m., around Klingman's Dome, hiking on a steep trail with drop-offs and dense brush growing on each side, she was said to have turned on the path to the right after spotting something. That was the last place she was seen. She was wearing a blue shirt with a blue and white striped sweater, a borrowed brown overcoat, jeans, dark blue Adidas shoes with a diamond and star sapphire ring on her finger. Helicopters could not begin looking for Trenny until late afternoon of October 8th because of intense weather and fall foliage. It was a challenge for search and rescue teams to see onto the camouflaged ground. Search and rescue teams brought about half a dozen dogs, bloodhounds and German shepherds mostly to look for any sign of her. Three of the dogs picked up her scent at the intersection along the Appalachian Trail. Searchers followed it around Klingman's dome tower. The last detection of her scent was along the roadside 1.5 miles from Newfound Gap. But that is where the dogs stopped. Since the search dogs led the team to a local road, this gave credence to a theory that she had possibly been abducted. Some accounts tell of cigarette butts and an empty beer can were around the area by the road where the dog had stopped. There was another search from April 18th to May 5th in 1977. That also failed to turn up any leads. A fellow student, Robert Simpson, was said to have been brought in because Trenny's hairbrush was found in the floor of his car, but local officials did not consider him a serious suspect. Parents Robert and Hope Gibson notified police about a past incident where a young man, her age, had attempted to break into their home. Mrs. Gibson shot and wounded him, and the young man later threatened to harm Trenny. Knox County authorities looked into the incident, but it went cold. A former classmate, Kim Pouncey, said in November of 2017 that she wonders if Trenny just took off from the park and that maybe she just wanted to leave or to get out. My feeling is somebody was waiting for her in the park, she said. There was a parking lot very close. I've always felt like Trenny planned it. And that was her way out. But what do you make of these mysteries? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.